Good morning, it is October 16 and I am still in Lamoille Canyon. Today I am doing the Island Lake Trail. So that kind of gives it away as to what's at the end of this trail. Um, it is so beautiful still, but it's awfully cold in the morning at camp. Oh, it's below freezing and very icy. So thankfully I have a nice warm bed in my car. This trail is at the very end of the Lamoille Canyon Road. It's actually called a Forest Service Road, but it's the nicest Forest Service Road I've ever been on. So paved. Anyways, there's, there's a number of trails you can do all through here and at the end. But the one I wanted to do was too muddy, apparently. That's what I've heard. So I'm doing this one and it's good. I want to do them all. So sadly, the leaves have all disappeared up at this elevation. Too bad. As I'm reading through the book of Deuteronomy, there is one recurring theme I'm noticing, and that is Moses pleading with the children of Israel over and over again, not to have any other gods before the one true God, or really not to have any gods at all but God. He seems to know these people well, and the land they are heading into is full of false worship of deities other than God Almighty. And he knows how easily the Israelites are willing to stray from the one true God. So it's his last ditch effort to instruct them while they are all together as one congregation. Because once they enter the promised land, they will be scattered all over in their various settlements. Not only does he tell them and plead with them, he also puts it in writing so that they will have no excuse. It's just a steady uphill climb. Aren't you glad I'm doing this and you don't have to, but you can still see what it's all about? He also counsels on avoiding wicked customs. He says, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire. Sadly, in later years, this was widely practiced in Israel. From early times, fire was worshipped and honored by heathen peoples as a god. He goes on to say, or one who practices witchcraft, or soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. I mean, look at this scene. Just gorgeous. Look at this tree with a story to tell. And I hear a waterfall or something. Little bit of snow. I mean, honestly, God bless the people that made this trail. It's incredible. Yeah, this other side doesn't have rails on it. <laughs> and it's slanting a bit. Beautiful.
You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess listened to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Oh, I can tell I'm coming up to something important. Wow. Okay, there's the lake. Oh, Island Lake. Majestic. Wow. What an incredible swimming place this would be. Do you know what a soothsayer is? It's someone who claimed to be able to interpret the various mysterious sounds of nature, such as the hum of insects or the rustling of leaves, and be able to commune with a non-human world. Also, did you know that ventriloquism was practiced by a depraved priesthood to deceive the people? They would pretend that spirits were talking by using ventriloquism. All occult and magical practices are strictly forbidden. God's people can trust that he will protect them from evil supernatural forces and he will take care of their future. Following pagan practices by getting involved in evil forces to gain power, defend oneself from other such forces, find out what's going to happen, or simply out of curiosity, takes a person away from God and his protection. The Healing Hiker rating for this Island Lake Trail is definitely a five out of five. It is another one of those perfect trails. Perfect length, perfect scenery, perfect destination. I am so blessed to have done it. And now, because the lake was so special, I'm gonna throw you back there. So how about you? Do you wanna put your trust in someone who can interpret insect sounds or read your palms or look at the constellation and tell you what's gonna happen? Or do you wanna put your trust in the Creator God who loves you so much and has your back and wants to lead and guide you to his eternal kingdom? So what is preventing you from giving your life to God?